The indications for mechanical inflation, exflation, is for those individuals with neuromuscular weakness. These patients have weak respiratory muscles, which decreases their ability to cough. A peak cough flow of around 160 litres per minute is a threshold for those patients that will benefit the most from mechanical inflation, exflation. And in the paediatric group, a reference value about 50% predicted is the ideal time to start it. Patients also need to have secretions. The device will provide a deep breath in followed by a suck out and mobilize secretions towards the mouth. You tend to find in individuals with low peak cough flows that never have chest infections don't necessarily benefit from the device because they don't have a secretion burden. The device is ineffective in obstructive lung disease. The contraindications for mechanical insufflation exflation are the same as those with positive pressure. So we wouldn't want to provide the device in someone that has a pneumothorax, if they have a tracheobronchial fistula, if they've got hemoptysis, or if they have a condition where there is bullous emphysema and we could potentially make that worse. Unlike non-invasive ventilation, a drained pneumothorax is a contract indication in mechanical insufflation because of the negative pressure within the thorax. There are various other contraindications that may be less common that you can find in the manufacturer's handbook and that is a good reference point if you're unsure of anything. No, it's not safe to use MIE in all patients. It's a highly specialised device and patients need to be assessed by an appropriate clinician. You would want to be cautious in the unconscious patient, those patients that cannot cooperate with the technique, and you need to remember that this device has the potential to shift an overwhelming amount of secretions that you will then need to clear. So it's important that you monitor oxygen saturations in patients when you're using the device, but also have resuscitation equipment ready in the first time you're trialing it. So mechanical insufflation exflation can be used in patients who are requiring non-invasive ventilation, whether that's at night only or whether it's those that are 24-7 dependent on non-invasive ventilation. It can be used in individuals that haven't reached the requirement of non-invasive ventilation as long as they are weak and have low peak cough flows. It can also be used in those patients that have an artificial airway, so for example a tracheostomy or if they're intubated and ventilated with an ET tube on the intensive care unit. So the pressures that are required during MIE should be titrated to an individual. You should start your pressures low and then you should build up so that you see a good rise and fall of the chest wall. What I would normally do is if I don't know where to start and my patient isn't on ventilatory support, I would start with an insufflation pressure around 15 centimetres of water and then build up in five centimetre increments until I see that good rise and fall. In patients with non-invasive ventilation, I would start at five centimetres of water above their inspiratory positive airways pressure and then, as said, evaluate the rise and fall of the chest wall and increase as required, also taking to it into account what the patient is telling me and how they are feeling. No, as a rule of thumb, I would usually set my exflation pressure to be five centimetres of water more negative than the positive pressure value and that could then be further increased to around 10 centimetres of water more negative. As a routine, I would not use oscillations with individuals who are on mechanical insufflation exflation. It's important to remember that the oscillations that the device deliver are not the same as those intrapulmonary percussive ventilation devices and therefore will not mobilise secretions further. That said, there is some unsupported evidence to say that individuals with bulbar diseases, for example, bulbar ALS, benefit from oscillations on the insufflation and exufflation to help prevent the glottic closure that can be seen in this patient group. 
There is no evidence at present to show that oscillations increase cough efficacy. Personally, I no longer use this technique. The thought behind having repeated insufflations was that you would provide deep breaths in, which would increase the inspiratory tidal volume, work on the collateral ventilation and move the secretions higher towards the central airways so that they could then be further enhanced with the exsufflation component of the device. Personally, I would now just allow my patients to switch from insufflation to exsufflation pause. The patient does not need to cough every single time. They can just let the device passively insufflate them and exsufflate them and thus move secretions towards the central airways and then the patient can cough when they need to. It's very difficult to know how much you need to do to move secretions and it's also very difficult to know how many coughs a patient needs to clear the secretions. By having a continued insufflation exsufflation pattern, the patient is therefore not dictated to when they need to cough, which might be earlier than what is physiologically required to clear the secretions. There are various studies that look at MIE. The initial papers were from John Bach's group in Newark, and that's a good reference point to look at what was happening in the earlier days. If we want to look at the literature around bulba ALS and non-bulba ALS patients, then Tina Anderson's work is a good reference point along with Jesus Sanchez. We have recently reported a state-of-the-art review and an ENMC workshop that looks at airway clearance techniques in detail and has a large section on mechanical insufflation exflation, and that would be a useful reference point to go to, and that is Toussaint et al. in 2018 and also Chatwin et al. in 2018.